I remember being on a plane. I was flying to New York. And I, I think I didn't sleep the whole flight. I kept like wandering the plane. I kept walking back and forth. And I think, and I don't think it really hit me until the pilot said, ladies and gentlemen, we're flying above New York. It was the feeling of excitement. And then shortly after that, it was, I was a little, I guess, scared and nervous. When I started dancing, um, when I first started at home, my mom was my mom was always the one who supported me. She's like, "Whatever you do, you know, as long as you love it, do it." So when I told that to my dad, he's like, he was really kind of negative about it, which I thought was funny because he's a figure skater, you know. So he's kind of in this business too, and he should. You should be the one who understands and like, okay, yeah, you do your thing. You know, go dance if you really want it. But it was very different. It was, it was like, no, you know, go to, go to school, learn, learn a degree. So when I first came to LA for the So You Think You Can Dance edition, this was my huge first major audition for me. So what I really felt was a lot of excitement and intimidation because here I am in the central hub of dance. I knew there's gonna be amazing dancers here. And then when you get on that stage and you see these other dancers doing their thing, in your head you're like, oh gosh. What am I going to do now, you know? So I kind of bombed that audition and I ended up getting cut. And as soon as that happened, when I went back home, I basically said to myself, okay, well, I need to take more choreography classes. I got to get used to doing other people's choreography. And I also started doing more classical training. So I started taking a little more contemporary jazz, ballet. Uh, one of my best friends uh, was a ballet dancer tapper and he you know, he, he, I would teach him break dancing. He would teach me how to do pirouettes and how to do ballet technique and how to tap. So when I went to the second edition, I was a lot, a lot more prepared as far as my dance ability and picking up choreography. It's a new season, so we've decided to take our auditions to some new cities and seek out some fresh talent. We heard there's a big dance scene right here at the foot of the Rockies, so we've come to Salt Lake City. Welcome to So You Think You Can Dance. And then So You Think You Can Dance came to town, and I think if they, were, if they wouldn't have came to Utah, I would have never auditioned for the show because it wasn't in my plans. <laughs> I don't audition a lot, so I gotta get used to calming my nerves down at auditions so I don't overdo things. Good job, Gab. Love Thank your you. musicality. Nice. I think I, already, I was expecting to get cut, so when they told Frosty. me, I was just yeah, kind I of... So too. I couldn't great. really believe it. I was Loved like, it. oh, <laughs> what just happened? It was one of those moments. Uh, so it was, uh, it was a great, I mean, it was a great feeling. This is So You Think You Can Dance. Please welcome your host, Cat Dealey. All of a sudden, you get this rise to fame and all of a sudden you 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 know up to that point nobody really knows you besides your friends and peers of course and all of a sudden the whole nation knows you 
The top 20 contestants are going to be split into 10 couples. Each week, the couples pick their dance style randomly from a hat. Then they perform, and at the end of the night, you vote for your favourites. I remember doing dances where I thought, oh my gosh, we are not prepared for this at all. Like, you know, literally we, a couple of dances were like a lift, we, we only got like twice in all the rehearsals. I love disco. I was brought up with disco. Um, I love Doriana Sanchez. Did I love that? No. And I'll tell you why. Why, Nigel? I'll tell why? you why. Um, there wasn't the feel to it. There wasn't the lovely get down and boogie feel. There, at one point, you're going around and your hands back here like that. It looked more like disco duck than anything else. As it, much as I was kind of prepping myself, for, for the worst, you know, you still don't ever want to be in that situation. Next up are Courtney and Gev. Let's get a taste of what went on in their hip hop rehearsals. Take Everyone, and not just me, but everybody gets nervous to get their own style. Like if I'm a hip hop dancer and I get hip hop, I get more nervous because there's a lot more pressure riding on you because people think, well, this is your style, you should be absolutely incredible at it. Gev. I, I agree. I don't feel like you really hit it hard enough, actually. And I was expecting more out of you. She was doing so good, I don't know if you were keeping up with her, man. I gotta be honest. You know, there's a, you, you, there was a couple moments you could have been a little more playful with her, just a little more strong. It just looked like you were thinking a little bit. I've always kind of was nervous to take the next step, and the show really showed me that not only that I can, but I should. Really loved it. Gav, man, you are a strong dude, and I need it to be remembered that you're a hip hopper. That is uh, an Anya and Pasha cha cha cha. Wow. She had to ask. <laughs> it was hot cha 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 cha. I'm telling you. Almost it. Hot cha 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 cha. <laughs> That's what I think. Um, there was a comment that was really hard to hear. It's a challenging week when we had Jive and then we had uh, Contemporary. There's a lot of throws and drops and all of that. And I danced it with, instead of Courtney, we got new partners that week and I danced with Chelsea. And I've put a lot of work into it. And so what happened that week, both Chelsea and I got hurt and her more than I, so our leg muscles were shaking and it got to the point where we could barely lift our leg. As a dancer, as you're competing and as you get hurt, it's, it's quite devastating because, uh, you know, our bodies is our tool. And so if, if something breaks, we can't, we can't build, we can't make anything anymore. So I was exhausted by that time. And I remember we were in that studio from 5 a.m. till about, I think, midnight or 1 a.m. just rehearsing. And I felt like I've put so much like blood and sweat. Do I push myself and get more hurt possibly, but get through this competition and be amazing? Or do I hold back and save some? Nigel. 
I did feel, though, Gev, as though you weren't completely behind the passionate side of it. I think was really hurtful because he didn't feel like I did my best. I think you may have had Courtney on your mind. He tried to make it funny, you know. Listen, and that really hurt me. Mark and Gev, are you ready for the results? No. No. <laughs> okay. The guy who polled the fewest votes and is leaving us tonight is... Gev. Congratulations to Mark. Thank you very much. Let's hear it for Mark, please, everybody. Get yourself right here. <laughs> the last week I was actually in the show was the week my, my dad flew to LA, and when I got cut, uh, from the show, you know, he, he said, hey, I want to tell you that I'm sorry for not supporting you and not believing in this and that. And when he first told me he was sorry, my, my first thing was like, I don't know, I was kind of, I was a little mad. You know, hearing that from him felt good. I was like, okay, that's nice. We're getting on the same page now. I started teaching, and I love teaching. I want to inspire kids and, and have them, not just for dance, you know, I think as a teacher, you, you should teach life lessons and not just dance, and that's kind of what I do. Anything's possible, really, if you really just keep believing in it and set your mind to it. Because life is unpredictable, so you never know. <laughs>